What's up everyone? Today I got something I want to show you. This is called the Infinity Flow S1. This came out of Purdue, which is just down the down down the road from here, not too far from me, about an hour and a half away from where I'm at. Um, so it's kind of cool to get something sent to me that's localish like that. Um, so we don't see a whole lot of cool stuff around here in Indiana. So kind of cool to get that. Um, and I'm really excited about this one because what this does, the, the part of it that I'm excited about is when we get filament that's on spools like this and we, when we run them through our 3D printers, it gets down to a certain point. Uh, this one is not too bad. The reason I don't have a smaller spool, I'll tell you in a moment. But when it gets down to a little smaller than this, then you go to do a print. You don't want to put that in the machine because it's going to run empty in a few minutes. So what this is going to do is do filament changes live while it's printing without any firmware changes or anything like that. So we can put a partial spool on here and it'll just use it. I've thrown away a lot of spools that have been, you know, had a small amount on them just because I don't want to mess with it. Uh, I ain't got time to sit here and babysit them all the time. So I don't want to put a, a roll on that's going to run out in two hours and then have to sit here for two hours and wait for it to run out, pause the machine, unload it, and do all that. So to be able to do this by itself is amazing. So we're going to assemble this. We're going to see what all came in the box. We're going to put it together, show you guys how it gets assembled, what it is, go over some features of it, how I'm going to hook it up. It can be hooked up to other printers, any FDM printer that's you know 1.75 millimeter really. Uh, can be adapted for it. So we're gonna go ahead and put it together and show you how it works. So here we go. Here we go. We've got a big box of goodies that I've got this stuff in. I'm not gonna get all this out. They have sent me some parts that I don't need. You know, you can use this for five kilogram spools down to one kilogram spools. So these are just larger larger ones and I'm not gonna use those. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the, the small ones because that's what I have most of. So we're gonna put those aside and then we will get the, uh, the small ones out here. So we have two of these already ready and these are the size that fits these spools, okay? So that's what we need. And it also came with the rollers here for multiple sizes. This is so if you wanted to use the five kilogram or the three, you've got your options here. These actually have bearings in them, and that's actually a 3D printed part right there that's just probably just popped in there. Let's pop it out just for the fun of it. There we go, maybe. Well, it's coming, there we go. But yeah, it's just a 3D printed part there that they have inserted the bearing inside and put in this aluminum rod. So we're gonna take the sizes that we need, and that's what we're gonna use. All right, so we got these for here, and we'll put these other parts up. And I've already got the screws and things out for this, and I'll show you how this all gets assembled. So I got all my parts sitting out here that I'm mostly gonna need. I've already opened the bags of the, of the hardware and things like that, but I'm gonna show you where they all go. We take a look at the site here, infinityflow3d.com. It shows you the price of them and some other stuff along through here, but there's also gonna, gonna be some pictures here that show you what you know what it's going to do as you can see it runs out there and then the new filament runs in right behind it and then there's the transition point in yellowish orange there that it just flows right behind it you can live load it without wasting filament and things like that it shows you some different printers that you know are options and, and different size spools um, that you could do so it says a five minute setup so we'll we'll see about that there's some other SDLs you can download if you want to get this set up on your own machine that it's not compatible with or it doesn't show that it's compatible with and there may be some different brackets or something you need to print. Uh, so you can do that. But what we want to look at down here is going to be the full setup guide. So you're going to click on that and here is going to show you all the parts you need and kind of how it goes together. So it does come with an Allen key and it's got a little ruler here on the card if you don't have a ruler available and a little tube cutting guide, which is kind of cool. So it shows you all the hardware and what you need to do. So I'm gonna go through and start doing what it says. So the first part is we're gonna put these two little tubes in the top. So just like this here, I'm just gonna slide these down in until it locks into place on both of them. And when you do that, you should be able to pull 
and they shouldn't be able to come out. The next part, we're gonna do these sides here. So you're gonna have the M4 bolts and M4 nut right here. So you wanna put the nut on the inside. There's a little spot right there for it. Put it in there and just loosen it out. Well, it's already gonna be loosened out for you. So just put it in there like this and make sure it's flush all the way around. And then your rollers are just gonna set inside there and when you tighten them up. It's actually really neat. A very simple process and very, very cool that they did it that way. So you're just gonna slide that in there like that. And then you're gonna tighten up this, this uh, screw here and it's gonna go right inside that bearing and it's just gonna kind of sit there, okay? Just like that. And we're gonna do that on all of these. So we only have a few to do, three left. So get them all tightened and then it just kind of sets in there. See, it spins. All right, so let's go ahead and get the other ones installed. Just set it right there. Make sure you're in the center. That's the that's the the one trick you have to do. Is <laughs> make sure you're in the center of the of the bearing. If there's a trick, if you consider that a trick. And here we go. And there's that one. Now we got we got one installed. Now let's go ahead and put the other one on. Ta-da! There we go. We got all four of them on. Now we got these put together. So what's the next step? After installing the rollers here, we also have these little rubber feet that slide on. Flip these upside down and you're gonna have four little slots right here. And these are just gonna slide in place. Right now, I'm not gonna take the red uh, sleeve off to make this permanent. I'm just gonna slide them in place. I wanna put all four of them in there. Now I will say, on these parts, they are printed with a little bit thicker layers than I typically do. They're very solid, they're, they're, fi they're perfectly fine, but there is some slight ringing on these parts. Uh, it's not gonna affect anything, but I can show you here, when you look at this, you can see we got some ringing here on these. Uh, they're printing it kind of fast is what's going on there. If you're not familiar with ringing, can look it up for 3D printing. Just going a little bit fast there and maybe the, the tuning could be adjusted slightly. It's not gonna affect the, this at all. So I'm not worried about that, but just something to note. So this part here is gonna be kind of your main thing here. It, it, it's what does everything. It's got your motors and everything. We've got two stepper motors attached right here. And attached to that, we have a couple of extruders. I, I haven't taken this apart to see how these operate really, but you just got a spring here that's attached to a gear. It's gonna push your filament and, and turn it through here, okay? So you got those two, and then you've got an on-off switch right here. Uh, up here, you've got uh, two in, one out. It's a hub that basically splits. You call it a splitter or something if you want, and it's got you a little spring action right there. So we're gonna mount this to these two holes here these two holes right here. So it's gonna mount on both of these. So let's go ahead and do that now. I would say the easiest way to do this part would be to maybe put your screws in first like this. And the cool thing about this is they did make access points everywhere through here. So you have a hole right here where you can get to that screw, which is very handy. So I would just look at it kind of at an angle here and line it up the best you can, hold it, and then just tighten it in. Uh, that's gonna be your easiest way to get that started without causing you a headache trying to figure out how to get it lined up properly. You know what I mean. We've all been there, okay? So there we go. That's all that needs to be done. So we'll tighten both of these up and we'll slap the other side on there. Now we've got that assembled. There's also a little brace that goes in the front here. This guy right here, it's got two screws here. I did go ahead and put these in already. There's a little square nut that you need to push through here on the top and push it down to where you can see it right here. Once you get that through, usually take something smaller here and put it through this hole and kind of pry, and that'll get it lined up right where you need it. And then we're gonna take our two M3 screws like this, and we're gonna 
screw those through the side. And again, they've left us a nice little handy dandy hole here. So we're gonna hold it just like this. We want this part facing the front, slide it in and drop our screw right down in there. Put our hole there and tighten it up. That's it. And we do the other side. There it is. So now she's good and tight. That's it. And that's assembly. I will say that was very, very quick. There is one more thing that needs to happen here. You need to hook these Bowden tubes up to the bottom right here, and you just push them right through that hole and give it a little pull to make sure it's in there. Same thing on this side. You can see the blue right there. Get it right into that little blue slot where that Bowden lock is push and then give it a pull so there we are now we're good then we got to move on to install it to one of these printers so we got to decide which one we want to put it on and let's put it we'll just put it on top and i'll set both the spools here we'll run it and see how it does with the spool change in the middle of a print so it does have here uh insulation for the printer it does include some bowden tube and some adapters and things to do what I'm going to need to do, I'm not really going to need much uh, except a piece of Bowden tube. So it's going to be very simple for me because I have a filament sensor on the back of my machines and they actually have a lock right there. So I can just put the Bowden tube from here and make a section to plug in right to that filament sensor and I'm good to go. So it may be different for anyone else's machine if you're running a bamboo, X1, A1, Reality, something, uh, or one of the other multiple printers they have on the market now it's going to be a little bit different but you just want to basically get this to where wherever your filament was coming in at uh, there's a bowden tube there wherever your one single spool is hooked up to your printer at you want this to be hooked up at so you're going to be feeding off of this now so that's the, the gist of that so let's go ahead and hook it up to the machine and see how it does so i'm going to install it on this machine here and we're going to take a look back here behind it and see how this is set up so the way this one is it's got the spool mounted here and it feeds in to this little spot here this tube just kind of slides in here and then on the back we have a lock here and this pops out I push in there we go and we'll pull the filament out of here so i need to heat this up or unload it from the tool head and then we'll do is put our machine here and then we'll put our Bowden tube right into this. I am not sure how it's gonna react with a filament sensor because it has to press through this thing. So we're gonna find out about that as well. So let's go ahead and pull this out and see how it does. We also need to uh, plug this thing in and in the bottom of it, there's a port right there that we're gonna plug into. And we'll plug this into the wall outlet. Push down on it, give it a little pull. And we could trim this down some in all fairness, but for just for this video, I'm just gonna leave it as it is because it will feed through there just fine. So now it's gonna feed through here, through these motors, through this, this motor, back to this and into the machine. We'll just have to see if it pushes through this filament sensor or not. If not, we're gonna have to get rid of that and do something a different way. Got some ambrosia grape here as you can see the spool's almost empty this is going to work out perfect i'm going to print some spool weights because i hate printing things that i'm not going to end up using anyways so i'll open this full spool and i'll put it on one side and i'll start with this one so when this runs out it should automatically switch over to this and start using it without me interfering flip the switch on it's actually got lights right here it's red on this side and red on this side right here is a little spring you can put your filament in. So I'm gonna spring it down as I push this in and the light turned green. Now it's feeding the filament by itself. So let's see if it gets through that filament sensor or if that may be too much pressure for it. Cause that one is a little bit hard to push through. Okay, once I got this to feed through there, I ran into a problem and I wanna show you all. So some of my printers like this and most standard printers will have a connection like this on the top where it feeds into your extruder. Um, this one does not. 
I didn't do that. It just got the tube that just sits in that hole. So it does come with some parts that you can manage to do this with. So for example, this here is that connection and you can thread that in the top and you can have you a, you know, locking mechanism for your Bowden tube there. Um, what really needs to happen is I need to reprint this part of my extruder with that section on it and I can pop that in there. For this video, I might just go ahead and pop this and screw it in place, which it will work. So let's do that and see if we can get this thing working. All right, so I changed my mind just a little bit. What I did was took a drill bit here and drilled that out a little bit bigger rather than printing the new part out. I took one of these ECAST fittings here and popped that in place. That's actually what needed to happen anyways, uh, but it needed a new part printed. This will do just as good. So it's locked into place. Now I just need to put the top piece here and lock it in and we'll be good to go. See the color there, you see the color there. So when we push this in, it's kind of feeding in there and locked in place so it's ready to go. So when this one gets empty, it should automatically feed this one directly behind it and continue to print just as normal. Let's see what happens. So there it is. That actually worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to with that filament sensor in there. And I will say when I pushed it through the first time, I pushed it through myself. I don't know if it would have enough power to push it through if it didn't uh, run like back to back. Uh, the filament wasn't back to back with it because it leaves that gap open. This, there's like a spring that presses up and down there. So if that was to open up and then press back closed, I don't think it can push it through there by itself. Other than that, it did a great job. This would be a great case for like a farm, being like there's a lot of printers there. Uh, you could have one of these on each machine and be able to swap out your filaments and use every single bit of the filament that you really want to get the use out of and not waste any of that. Uh, that being said, I also, <laughs> I made a mistake on this guy. So this is what happens whenever you print something and don't orient it properly on the build plate. I printed it like this, wasn't paying any attention, and look what happened. I'm surprised it's even printed, to be honest with you, because this had the print in midair. If anybody knows much about 3D printing that's watching this video, you know what I did wrong here. I should have printed it like this rather than like this, but I wasn't paying much attention. But that's okay. I can just print another one of these parts and I'll be good to go. This is actually a spool weight that goes inside of here. You put some weights in, inside of here and it keeps it heavy. It kind of for stuff like this, but it's actually for the box turtle that's behind me there. Another one of the really cool things that I liked about this to begin with was there's no firmware or no changes that need to be made. You don't have to go into Clipper and, and change codes. You don't have to install things and, and configure things. You just flip the switch and you're good to go. So that's really cool. Um, it's very simplified for people that don't want to mess with all that stuff. I'm a kind of a tech guy myself. I kind of enjoy that kind of stuff. But for people that don't like to do that, flip the switch and you're good to go. So I really do like this. I'm actually gonna end up installing it on my machine down here and leaving it at the end. I'm gonna use it to kind of get rid of some of my smaller spools and stuff. So it's gonna be staying there. And I'm gonna be using it in my setup here every day. So as time goes by, if there's any changes or any, I feel any different about this, I will let you guys know. Thank you all for watching. For people that do not know, we do live streams on this channel every Saturday and every Tuesday, Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, Tuesday, usually at eight o'clock Eastern time. So. Join us there sometime if you enjoy live streams and it's actually me and my wife both out here for that. So you get to see us, you know, bicker at each other. And thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video, leave a comment, do all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. I will see you on the next video. Have a great week.